with Great Britain's golden generation once again grabbing cycling headlines, excitement is already growing for its next crop of road racing talent. While some have emerged from British Cycling's renowned track programme, others are now forging their own unique paths to the top. With this in mind, it's time to take a look at four of those expected to be making their mark on the sport in the not-so-distant future. At just 24, Katie Archibald is already one of the biggest names in the world of track racing. With Olympic and World Championship medals in the team pursuit, Omnium and Madison, the Flying Scot has all the skills to become a road superstar. Uh, when I fell in love with track cycling, it was the points race that um, I kind of I identified with, I think. Um, or that's the, that's the kind of rider that I wanted to be. That was um, the style of racing that um, I admired and really wanted to, to embody. And um, the higher up the ranks that I got from local racing to national racing, um, I realised I was just really good at pursuing, um, <laughs> and uh, um, it, it, it meant I could essentially fast track um, a lot of my performance because it was a case of having an engine and figuring out how to use it on a black line. When people say, my daughter's getting really into cycling, can you give us some tips? And um, I'll always say just get fast before you can go long, there's no point in going long if you can't go fast. Um, and I think the groundwork that the track lays is perfect for that. With focus fixed on the track ahead of the 2020 Olympic Games, Archibald has still found time for the road, spending part of last year with Team WNT and this season with Wiggle High Five. Combining with Team WNT, I had uh, a lot of opportunities to actually go for results for me, which is, yeah, I guess, pretty rare in your, your first international road season. So um, we had entries to some World Tour races and things. and. Um, made a huge amount of mistakes, which is useful now. Um, <laughs> I think the, the role that I'm kind of aspiring to is um, almost a bit of an apprenticeship, I hope. That's almost what I enjoy about the road racing that I'm doing, is that um, I can so easily get a small personal victory, um, because, yeah, because, because I'm not, not playing around in top step. I'm sort of battling just to be present in um, in all of the big races. The one thing I do know is I want to be a professional cyclist for as long as I possibly can be, um, and whether that means setting new, um, setting new ambitions, uh, that might be the way it goes, but at the moment I'm in, yeah, in love with what I'm doing, so I can't imagine wanting to uh, change, paths, change paths too drastically. I did just buy a mountain bike, so maybe. A master of time trialling, Harry Tanfield follows in the riding tradition of the likes of Bradley Wiggins and Alex Dowsett. Riding for Continental-ranked Canyon Iceberg, his breakaway stage victory in this year's Tour de Yorkshire reflected the powerful performances he displayed at a domestic level for the past two seasons. We took him on uh, back in Pedal Heaven days, basically, um, before we could come by Channel Canyon. Um, and we've had him for the last three years. Uh, he's, he's developed massively over the last few years, basically. He's matured. Um, he's became an astute rider. You know, tactically, he's very aware of what, what, what he's doing. Obviously, they're very aero, um, and that's definitely one of his advantages. He plays, plays that to his strength, basically. He's kind of a metronome in, in respect that you tell him to be on the front at you know, 500 watts, and he'll just, he'll just do it. Talk about Tour Yorkshire stage win there. Uh, he definitely, you know, worked very well in the breakaway and, and knew exactly what he was doing when uh, and where he needed to do it. He knows that to be at the front, particularly in the crits, um, use the corners to his advantage. He's got his own line to take, and you know he can put the power down early and just sort of, you know, for his style of rider, it's a lot better than just punching out the corners all the time. But he can be the the hammer rather than the nail, if you like. Even though he's a great time trialer and he can do you know, a job individually, say, in an individual time trial, team time trial, but also just pull in a break back, you know. Um, he's been great for us. Take Salisbury, for example, we just put him on the front and kind of let him destroy the field. Within our team, he's going to be um, in the Tour Britain squad. So, um, yeah, just, you know, we've got a block in Belgium coming up um, and he'll play a big part in that as well. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, the future's bright for him.
21-year-old Matt Gibson's ascendancy to the top of the British criterium scene has been as rapid as the sprints he's capable of. Under the guidance of one of the best established British continental teams, Gibson looks on the cusp of bagging a place on the world tour for the 2019 season. Matt Gibson was part of the uh, World Class Performance Programme at British Cycling. He was identified by them as a junior and uh, he was uh, kind of fast-tracked through the system, to be honest. Um, he showed great potential as a junior, uh, but unfortunately uh, he got glandular of the fever uh, whilst he was like being fast-tracked sort of thing. Kind of wasn't identified straight away and he carried on racing and training. He had like uh, maybe six months out, something like that, and then we took him on, uh, what would be you know, best part to 18 months ago now. As soon as he started racing again at sort of full tilt though, um, he was like, it, it was obvious why, you know, he was uh, spotted by GB, the kid's got a, you know, a lot of talent. He's actually he's a sprinter, out and out sprinter, but he's a sprinter that can also pass climbs as well, sort of small or medium climbs. So um, yeah, he's uh, he, he will be a good asset to a you know a world tour or a pro continental team, which is his ambition to to move up. He's pretty quiet to start off with, but as he's he's grown as the season goes on. And while sometimes you know riders get overly confident, he's not overly confident with what is you know the stuff he says. It's always like good good information that comes out of his mouth when he speaks, which is always a, a, you know, a good sign. I'm hoping that Great Britain will still pick him for the Tour de l'Avenir. If not, then he can fall back on riding the Tour of Great, Great, Tour of Great Britain for our team as well. So either way, he could finish off his season well. And with the results he's had early season, and then possibly some, you know, just a little bit more showing in, in either L'Avenir or Great Britain, and I think he'll move on to a, a next, uh, next level team up. Few young riders from anywhere in the world have created a buzz like Tom Pidcock. A sense of showmanship on the bike has been backed up by results, including a junior time trial world championship and the overall under 23 World Cup in cyclocross last year. And under the guidance of the legendary Sven Nice, Pidcock has at least another winter season ahead of him in the latter form of the sport. It's a few years ago I followed him uh the races, the results, and on social media, and uh, there we got our first contact. And uh, directly he uh, sent it me back. Uh, we had some conversations, and we had a good contact. And I had a good uh, conversation also last year during the World Cup in Coxhead, also with his parents. And he was interested uh, to come more to cyclocross and also more to Belgium and learn more more about riding in a team, in a really cyclocross team. So and then everything started and I'm really happy that we have a guy as Tom in our team. He wants to learn and um, sometimes uh, a lot of other people, they think that yeah, he's a little bit relaxed and everything is cool. And, but uh, when he closes the door, he's always busy with um, improvement, uh, try to learn, try to see how other riders are doing it. And it's really a nice guy to work with. He's listening really well, he's so young, and I don't know uh, where it's going to end, but I'm really happy that we are involved uh, and, and we can do something with him. The 19-year-old's long-term future looks likely to be on the road, with his versatility making him one of the hottest properties in cycling. For now, at least, Cyclocross is proving the perfect testing ground for this prodigious talent. On a certain point, you need to uh, make a decision. If you see, for example, the, the guys who are winning now Tour de France, that are guys who are only focused on the Tour de France. So they don't win spring classics. So can you imagine that you're doing a complete cyclocross season and a road season? That's not something you can do anymore. Maybe 20, 25 years ago that was possible. So we need to make a decision, but not on this age. All the doors are open now and that's interesting. So uh, let him learn, let him make mistakes, and on a certain point, he's gonna take his own decision what he wants to do, and we're gonna help him as long as possible. His weight, uh, his engine, his skills, and his mentality. It's, it's, uh, it's the, complete, uh, the complete rider.